community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Billy Ray Valentine, Capricorn. Well, folks, we posted the chart of the uh, E-mini S&P that we've been watching here for the last three days. Uh, yesterday, we went short at the uh, 4158 level. Uh, we got down to 4127. That was 30 handles. Uh, we ended up taking about 12, I think about 18 points out of that one. And then we left our stop in at uh, 4178 and boy if you didn't think that was a little scary because we got to 4172 last night in the middle of the night and of course the, the old skype messages were popping off the hook saying what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong and, and i said let me look at it just keep your stop in and go back to sleep because basically what i said because if you watch that darn screen folks it's going to drive you absolutely nuts you put a trade on forget about it move on do something else because no one cares whether you're buying or selling honestly they don't. So just do your own thing and go in and do it. That's all you really have to do. Nothing more, nothing less. But that's what we were watching last night. But at the same time, uh, people, you know, say, what are you doing? And I says, well, I'm watching the structure of the market in different areas because, you know, we have not just the Dow Jones and the S&P. We've got the NASDAQ and we got the Russell and everything else. And, and what I was watching, of course, was look at the NASDAQ. Now, this was the NASDAQ doing last night. And you'll see You'll see the, the numbers that we were looking at. Of course, you know, it's broken way more than 100 points off that high today, about 140, I believe. And uh, But anyway, you'll notice as we look at this, uh, there was our 1.618 number, folks, uh, within just a heartbeat of that. So I said, if we get above there, that means our stop at uh, 4178 on the S&P would be valid. And then you, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, you know, you, you don't have any control over it. These are just numbers. The patterns fail. Heck, we see them fail all the time. There's nothing unusual about that. But at the same time that I was watching the NASDAQ and the S&P, I was also watching the Dow Jones because it happened to be the weakest. Because I'm going to show you the reason why it was the weakest in just a second. Well, my interpretation, of course. But anyway, let's take a look at it. This is, a, this is just a three-minute chart so I can see what was happening as the NASDAQ was making its high, the Dow Jones – uh, was making its high right up here, and also the S&P was making its high at uh, 4172. This showed a perfect, you can see the beautiful three drive to a top pattern, the multiple ABCDs coming in here, and of course, you know, we've f fallen way below all these numbers since that uh, pattern was hit, but that's what we were watching, and so I knew that the stop was placed correctly. Now, when you're trading the S&P, you're trading something that's worth, you know, a quarter of a million dollars, so to risk, you have to risk at least 20 points nowadays if you're going to trade the E-mini professionally. That's 1,000 points. Once in a while, you can get in for a little less than that. But that's pretty much the ball game of what you're, what you're looking at. So you can't, uh, you can't get it any closer than that. You know, you look at your, you look at your daily, then you go down to your, your four-hour chart, your 30-minute, whatever it is, and get to the point where you think your risk control is going to be. And then, then you have something to, you know, actually uh, put together. Now, at the same time, if you remember yesterday, I spent a lot of time on this because the same thing happened again last night with the Russell not even able to make a new high overnight. You'll notice here was the Russell from the high that we made back here in February on the 6th of February. All we could do yesterday was make a 382 retracement, and then we came down and then we went up, and we couldn't even make a high above that last night when the markets were going crazy. The Russell could get up on the day, but it couldn't take out the previous day's high. That was another sign of weakness. So, you know, if those of you are doing something like that to prepare yourself, then, you know, <laughs> but, you know, see what's going on. We'll be able to see uh, what's happening here. Now, let's do uh, one other thing, and that was sent to us by our good friend Rich Anderson at Anderson Capital Management. 
he uh, follows it. Well, we follow these together, of course, because we've been doing this for so long. I mean, Rich has been in this business 54 years. I've been in business 62 years. I, I knew Rich when he was 19 starting this business. But uh, look at this. This is the oversold index and overbought index for the S&P. Look how many times this thing has been pretty close to a spot to look at. Now, we got Stan Harley as our guest today. And Stan said sometime in mid-April, as I recall, that there probably would be an intermediate top. And he was looking for this rally, and he certainly nailed it right to the cross. And I think it's sometime next week that he's he's looking at it. I'm looking for a you know, shorter-term version of that. But that's, uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at as far as overbought and oversold. And, of course, with the Federal Reserve, oh, just a minute. So, hold on just a second. So I have to send uh, uh, I have to send someone a message. Um, okay. All right. There we go. Let's move on here to the next one here that I wanted to talk to you about. The same thing, the same time that this was happening with the S&P, the Dow Jones, the Russell, and the NASDAQ, we were looking at the German DAX. This was the same chart that we were looking at yesterday, folks. And if you take a look at it, we were completing multiple ABCD patterns here in the German DAX. And the same thing happens. You take out all of these highs with this double ABCD pattern that's right here. And that's what brought the reversal down, in, in my opinion. But I'm just looking at pattern completion. That's really all I'm, that's all I'm paying attention to. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go across the channel and we're going to go look over, uh, well, you know, across the channel in Germany, you take the train. <laughs> You're going to take a look here at the E-mini. Um, it's not an E-mini. It's the, the, the FTSE, which is the London stock. Hold on just a second here. The, my, uh, my beeper is going off and it's a good beeper. So let's move on here to see what's moving on. Anyway, you can see here the same thing. We went up. We didn't, we didn't quite make that one point, uh, the 618, nor did we make, just a minute, boys and girls, I have to, uh, I have to make a uh, technical thing here. I hope I'm doing the, oh, this is a good one. Yeah, I'll show you what it is in just a second here. But uh, hold on just a minute. Let me get this up here for just a second. Anyway, you, as you can see here, we, the, the FTSE was the weaker of the of the indices uh, because it couldn't even make you know new highs and this is uh you know this is really weak compared to the others are way up here and the other this one's way down here so you want to sell the weakest so this has already started to sell off quite a bit the problem with the FTSE folks it's a London exchange but most of those stocks are foreign stocks I mean they got them from Spain Portugal Turkey Israel I mean they're from all over so there's very few London there's some London stocks in there but not very many. The DAX is the one that's uh, that's equivalent to our S and P. That's a that's a really good one to trade. But the FTSE, nah, not so much. I bring it up because we have so many friends and students over there that we chat with every day, so we find out you know what's going on with the things that are happening now. What we're going to do now, since we're talking about the folks over in London, we're going to do something really special for the next few minutes after we take this break. I'm going to break down a trade that is happening right now just like we did in the S&P. It's going to be the same thing, but it's not going to be the S&P. And we're going to take a look at it when we get back from the break because people are saying, how do you ever keep track of this stuff? And I just like doing it, boys and girls. That's the bottom line. So we'll be right back, and we're going to look at the British pound. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio Tom O'Brien is here to help Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you Tom's daily market newsletter market insights is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 okay folks i posted the chart of the british pound this is a daily chart going over the past several months but as you can see if you're looking at this chart at a blank chart not knowing anything about patterns it doesn't mean very much to you but if you were to do some of the work just like what we did with the uh, e-mini S&P and Coco and everything else that we'd watch uh, you'll see that uh, there are some really significant things that are happening here uh, in the British pound so I'm going to bring us up going to go I'm going to show it to you in several different ways so that you can get a grasp of what we're looking at first of all this is a daily chart so this is something that should be around hold on one second get it up here so you'll be able to see it now as you look at this you can see the bottom was made here you can see this is what we call a double bottom you can see the multiple a b c d patterns that are forming okay but look on the upside now you have the same thing you have a start here folks <laughs> you have a b c d a b c d a b c d coming up to this area which is 125 20. That's the area that we were looking to go short. Now, it hit there. We backed off just a little bit, not very much. But the risk on this trade is very, very well defined, much like it would be with the S&P. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at it just a little bit closer and put it up, uh, get up the numbers. You'll be able to see it just a little bit. And I've got one more besides this. Hold on. And you'll be able to put it together and see how we see multiple swings coming together. I've got one more to show you, and then that'll be completion of this, because we know that once we get to this level right here, look at this, folks. We have one ABCD pattern right here. We have another ABCD pattern right here, and we have another ABCD pattern right here, all of her culminating at this area of 125.30. So if we sell in that area, we know that it runs at $6.25 a tick. All we have to say is, oh, we raise a 50-point stop, so that's $300. Well, a move like this, you know, you stop and think, a move like this is several thousand dollars, well over $3,000. And by golly, you know, you're only risking, you know, $300 to uh, try to make something like that. I don't, I'm not saying it's going to go down there. I'm just saying that's what it looks like, you know, when it's, uh, when it's finally completed. And that's... Uh, 
that's the the name of the game. I've got one other one, I believe. I think that I think that covered it. Yeah, that covers it. Of what we're looking at. So that's what that British pound trade looks like. Now, I've had some questions. We talked about that dynamite triangle that, you know, there's basically a flag formation. I don't want to get into that because I'm an ABCD type swing trader. They do have applications for people that are really active, you know, actively trading certain things. If you remember yesterday, uh, we were watching the, uh, because we're so bullish, silver and gold. I'll just get this up here to, uh, to see it, if I can get it one more time here, this happens to be the uh, chart on the silver that we were watching, and we'll get this up here. You'll see this was we had uh, there was a winner here, a winner here, a winner here, uh, a winner here. Then we had a loss right here. It went a little bit lower. Okay, then we had a winner here, and then it ended up being breaking even. Breaking even. Okay, but you see, you're not going to win all the time. I hope you realize that. So what we did was. We're following this because we have people that are involved with something like this. And if you go through it, here's, a, here's an update of what happened. And if you, if you like strong trending markets, boy, we've got some tools that are very, very helpful. And as you can see here, uh, there was the loss, if you remember. See, that basically a break even. But look at the one today, folks. Look at this one. This, one, <laughs> this was a monster. And so that's why, uh, you know, they're, poor, they're powerful. Do they work all the time? No, they don't. I'm trying to get um, TFNN to maybe do a little webinar on it to show uh, how to use dynamite triangles. Because with these wild markets that were happening, they work just as well on the downside as they do on the upside. We've seen that, you know, in both uh, up and down markets. So uh, they're working, if you were watching the S&P today, we're doing the same type of thing uh, on the way down. It was breaking and making new lows. And then finally, we had this rally that we're into right now. We've come back about 200 points in the Dow Jones, which is actually a pretty substantial rally as we start to look at some of these things. Now, okay, now that's the basis of what we're looking at with the British pound. We've got everything. That What'd that take? Five minutes? So what you have to do is you have to learn, you know, to pick the highs and lows and how to figure out what the ABCD patterns are doing. That chart in the British pound, folks, is no different than this chart right here in the S&P 500. There it is right there. It's exactly the same chart. ABCD is everywhere. Now, you have to learn how to count the time frames, you know, so that you know the distance between your highs and your lows is equal in time and price that gives you a really good indication that you're in a, in a really good uh, area and there was one that we did last week that we talked about on this show and that was cop cocoa hot chocolate believe it or not and i haven't traded this but probably twice a year but look at this beautiful pattern that we had here just like the s p you see the beautiful three drive to a top right here there's drive one there's drive two there's drive three you come down, you make a one, three, five pattern on the downside. Look at that perfect parallel channel, folks. That's right out of Gartley's book, page 249, parallel channels, A, B equals C, D. Also, the formula is from uh, Mandelbrot. You go up, there's your profit objective right up here. You can go short, and guess what? It's probably going to come down to the lower part of this channel. Now, the channel's starting to go higher now. So you realize that these markets, when they back off, sometimes they're only going to back off to a short, a shorter uh, retracement, and then you have something that you're able to, uh, you know, really look at. So I hope that helps to understand, you know, what we're doing is we're setting up a trade. You start out with the daily chart, you move on to your four-hour, you can do a four-hour or a daily, then go to your 30-minute, then if you want to get down to a smaller time frame like eight-minute or five-minute to get to where you want to be. Now, I wanted to bring to your attention one other one before we have Stan on. This is one that was applicable today, and I wanted to bring this up and show you. This is the gold market. Very similar now, if you remember that NASDAQ uh, thing that we're looking at. You see how gold today uh, with this big, there was the buy. Remember we pointed that out, perfect 61% retracement, just right on the money. There was the original buy at the 382. There was your secondary buy, you took profits today. There was your 1.618 expansion at the high, folks, 2045. We're a little bit lower than that, but not much. And you can see that it was an A, B, C, D pattern to the upside also. This was a tough one right here because you see that 382 right there. But look at that dynamite triangle right here last night, folks. This morning, a dynamite triangle, boom. Risk is about four bucks and they ran four grand without even taking a deep breath. Those are the kind you really like to see. So got some active markets 
which is great. You know, sometimes they're not active, but they're still great. And uh, these are very, very active. And I'm thinking they're going to be continuing on because, you know, we got interest rates are actually dropping with bronze going up. And so when the Fed finally does come in and do their last rate cuts, it's going to be uh, really interesting what happens after that. And I still re believe that our our banking system is still not out of the woods because these banking stocks have not done very much. And speaking of stocks, you remember our number that we were watching yesterday in the uh, Apple. And we want to get this because this was another perfect uh, 135 that we had here. And I did get above uh, one, my magic number of 160, uh, 65 and three quarters. It got to 166 and three quarters, I believe. And then, of course, it started to sell off with the rest of the market. We're going to stay tuned. Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. Don't miss it. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, in the house. Stan, how are you doing today? I'm just doing awesome, Larry. Good. Listen, I know you have some stuff on high translation, so I'm... I'm anxious to see what you have for us. So you want to tell us what we're looking at today? Absolutely. Uh, first chart I thought we'd take a look at involves the stock market. Okay. And uh, first one we have on the screen here is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 going back several years. And what I've done here is I've shown with purple lines each of the major troughs. And this forms a variable cycle that uh, 
spans not only about 34 weeks, roughly eight months. And that cycle contracts and expands, but not only it spans about 34 weeks, about eight months. It last occurred in mid-October. And based on my analysis, it's to be once again uh, in mid-June. Very good, okay. Um, the next chart we have here is a daily chart of the S&P 500. And uh, what I've done here is I've highlighted what I call the trading cycles. And uh, each 34 week cycle, Larry, typically is composed of four separate and distinct what I call trading cycles. That I, if you took 34 weeks, eight months, sliced it in a four, you have four distinct cycles averaging about 40 to 42 trading days. Uh, that's not actually how it occurs in the real world. They kind of expand and contract. Uh, but what this shows, this is a chart I ran off just a few moments before our meeting. The first trading cycle off the October low of last year went 49 trading days, bottom to bottom. The second went 53 trading days, and we're in the third trading cycle right now. Okay. Now, what I try to do is I try to analyze this with my uh, technician's magnifying glass, and what I want to look for is evidence of either right or left translation. It's something that I've talked about and what I do there is I, I look for where the crest occurs, the high point of the cycle. And if it's to the right of the midpoint, that's what I call right translation. If it occurs to the left of the midpoint, that's called left translation. Right translation is associated with a mar rising market environment. Left translation is associated with a decline environment. From the January high of last year, all the way into the October lows, all of the trading cycles, uh, all four of them, uh, were characterized by left translation. Meaning, wow. the market went up a lesser amount of time from top to crest than it went down from a recent drop. At the October bottom, things changed. The first trading cycle saw right translation. The second trading cycle and this is where it gets a little interesting, the second trading cycle in the S&P 500 saw right translation but not only one trading day. So the crest occurred one trading day to the right of the midpoint. But I think it's helpful to look at more than just the S&P 500. Here's a chart of the Dow Industrials, and I, I ran this off of just a few moments ago as well. Um, as with the S&P, we had left translation all the way to the October bottom. First trading cycle, October 13th to late December lows, was characterized by right translation. Hey, Stan. Look at the second trading cycle. Hey, Stan, I have a question for you now. You, I, I'd like for you to do, if you could um, uh, reset your mic because it's coming through a little, a little scratchy here. And if you'll reset the mic, that might help. And also tell the folks where that high translation came from. It was from Walt Bressard, I believe, wasn't it? Here. Um, how is that? Is, it a little, is that a little bit clearer? Oh, that's much better. Yes, that is. Okay. That's much, Thanks much for better. Me. There you go. Yeah, oh, wait. Have some the problem is computer issues on my end, so I apologize. I'll have it fixed next time. <laughs> okay. Uh, but to your question, I was originally uh, alerted to this concept of translation by the late Walter Bresser. Yes. And, uh, and I studied the pattern. And indeed, it's a very valid one, very, very valid. Surprisingly, uh, other technicians don't, haven't glommed onto this. Um, but it's something I spend a lot of my time on because I'm a cycles guy. <laughs> yeah, me <laughs> too. I, I like it. Yeah, it's a Most of the very technicians important to me. Most technicians are not cycles people. The reason they aren't is because cycles are variable, and they're looking for the holy grail, and they want to see a. 80-day cycle come in at 80.00 days with no variation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just not real world. <laughs> so most technicians kind of, they go market cycles, and eh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So they pretty much discard them in their toolkit. And I get that. But it, when you approach this from a little bit of a more mathematical reality, you understand the nuances. And that's what I strive to do. Uh, and I have been for years, and that's what I strive to do when you and I talk here on the air. 
Um, I take it a step further, not just the timing. I want to look at the structure. I want to look at the translation function. Do we have right? Do we have left? Or do we have center translation? Mm -hmm. So with the Dow, oh my gosh, we've had a shift towards left translation. That means the next cycle is likely to, to uh, convey lower highs, lower lows. And that's what happened in the second one. And indeed, I think it's going to happen in the third and the fourth. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll spare you all the math and charts here, but what I did is I just summarized what I call the big five major indices. The big five for me are the S&P, the Dow, the NAS, the New York Comp, the Transports. And uh, I got out my calculator and did a little tricky calculation on all of those, summarized whether or not the prior trading cycle had exhibited either right, left, or center translation. Here's the summary. And as you can see with the naked eye, uh, we've got more left translations than right or centered. What does that mean? Hmm. means probably the market has peaked for the current 34-week cycle and we're, we're going to head south. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Um, Very. Speaking of cycles, uh, <laughs> sometimes cycles do a pretty dandy job of... Uh, coming in pretty close to on the mark. Here's one that hasn't varied much more than, I think, five trading days over the course of two years. Um, 80 trading days, a very common number that shows up in the markets, particularly the stock market, uh, across multiple time frames. But look how regular this has been. And this is going back two years. And uh, I put all these dates into a spreadsheet, done a regression analysis, and it says look for the next high in the vicinity of uh, April the 10th. And the standard deviation on that computation is three trading days. Wow. We are April 4th, April 10th. Next week, there's a holiday on Friday. So mm -hmm. what the analysis is suggesting is we should see a high coming up pretty soon. Could be three, four, five days either side of that date. Standard deviation mm -hmm. computes three trading days. So uh, we're getting close. Uh, that's what I would say. Uh, Stan, uh, one of the listeners is asking uh, from uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, is asking, uh, on why do you pick trading days as opposed to calendar days? Is there a specific reason for that? Oh, good question. Um, because with calendar days, you've got holidays, you've got weekends. Yep. It's just not as clean. For me, I use trading days because that's how I count how every single day trades. Now, it gets a little cumbersome. You've got to manage it in a spreadsheet uh, to do the analysis. But I do that. I use VLOOKUP. Uh -huh. It works well. Okay. Hey, stay with us. We'll be right back with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. Thanks, Stan. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. back folks speaking with stan harley the harley stock market letter stan i really like that part about that high translation that brings back a lot of memories my friend <laughs> well thank you um i reconnected the microphone how's the clarity in my voice boy now? it's uh that's a mucho better this is uh this is spot on you got oh, uh excellent you, this is just great 100 percent uh, better they're saying so that's super some computer issues on my part that i will get corrected next time <laughs> I'm well, glad I, I never have I those. So. There was a problem seeing all the charts as well, um, and I know we're going to be doing another segment later in the day, and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we will review them uh, carefully again. Uh, I thought I'd go into interest rates and some related items uh, there too. Uh, this next chart, Larry, is a chart of bond yields going back to the 1750s, and. Uh, while I cannot find a definitive cycle, although post-Civil War, there's a 40-year cycle in the data series, but this is something that I find very interesting. All of the highs and lows, every one of them, can be defined by the Lucas numbers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can see I've noted the time counts in years. Um, the first high to high sequence was 44 years. That's Lucas number 47 is the operative function. The next one went 78 years. That's Lucas 76. And the next one was 61 years. That's Lucas 29 times 2, 58 years. So um, you've heard me talk about this a lot with, of course, the, the stock market. Uh, but the Lucas numbers are operable in the, in the treasury complex as well. Very, very interesting. I find Lucas numbers to be far more powerful than Fibonacci in, in terms of timing. Okay. You you're certainly good. You, you've been doing a really good job with the timing, my friend, so don't change anything. You said this rally was going to happen <laughs> into April, and by guys, it's happened. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, um, I have to keep my pencil sharpened and uh, stay at it. Uh, this business never rests. <laughs> Uh, here's uh, here's what you and I and all our viewers would pay if we were going to go out and get a 30-year 30 30 mortgage for our house. And uh, oh my gosh, look what's happened in the last two yeah. years. Woo! Painful. Look at that. Sure is. Surprised uh, you're even selling anything. Well, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, this little uh, volcano we've seen in interest rates has had effect on the next chart. Let's look at uh, home prices. Uh, this is the wow. Case Schiller data series. I pull this from the U.S. government FRED website and uh, plot it in a spreadsheet. The blue lines are the monthly price bars that are reported by the U.S. government, reported by Case Schiller. And then I've also added uh, in red an 18 month moving average. This is the national index, and there are 20 
various regional indices and 10 major metropolitan area indices, uh, in addition to the national index. They all exhibit the same waveform that you're seeing here, but the amplitudes uh, can vary. Typically out west, the amplitudes are a little bit more volatile and in the, in the southern region and the eastern United States, a little bit less volatile. How is it where you are, Stan? You live in the, in the uh, you live in New Jersey, right? I'm in New Jersey. They're not as volatile volatile as they are out west. This yeah. next chart is closer to home where you are. Um, this is the Los Angeles area index, and the Phoenix index looks just like this, of which you are a part. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to live there as well, uh, and I also lived in Southern California. But as you can see, this has got the same exact same waveform as the national index. And you can think of housing just like the stock market. I mean, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, the New York Composite. The national index is kind of like the New York Composite. And um, the various sectors of the housing market are sort of like the various sectors of the stock market. Think of it the same mm -hmm. way. Um, well, we have cycle highs and lows. Um, and this can be measured and analyzed and plotted. And I do a regression analysis of the data. Um, I found there's about a 63 to 64 month cycle in home prices, what I call change in trend cycles. So it could be a high or a low, but that is a very, very regular recurring cycle. It last peak, peaked, peaked with an ED um, last year. Home prices are heading south. And what I have noted in the past, every time the monthly bars have crossed the uh, the 18 month moving average, uh, a buy sell, a buy signal or a sell signal has been rendered. Uh, there was a fake out a little bit um, in 2009, 2010, uh, but nevertheless, generally speaking, when the monthly bars cross either to the upside or the downside, you either get a bull or you get a buy signal or you get a sell signal. And look what's happening right now. Uh, the latest mm -hmm. date just came out a few days ago and we are now crossing the red 18 month moving average, and that is highly suggestive of the sell signal right now in real estate. And I think wow. it's itself. Those are great. I just, I love seeing these because it brings back so many memories when we were, I, since folks, those, I've known Stan for 40 years and we were, we didn't even have, we didn't have computer charts. We got our charts from commodity perspective. You, <laughs> so it, it was, it was a lot different when you had to draw your own lines on <laughs> and do your own calculations of moving averages. That's for sure. I mean, it, we live in just, it, it's certainly in, in the career field that you and I are in, we couldn't be yeah. in in better times and what we the information we have available available or charting yep. and sharing and real time data is just yep. eye popping. <laughs> eye -popping. It really is. It's it's just totally mind boggling. That's the actual word you want to use. I, I don't know if you know this or not, Stan, but you know, Walt Bresser was one of the reasons why we have desktop and all this data and stuff. You know, he was one of the original guys, along with Tim Slater, down at CompuTrack that started that so back in 80, yeah. 81, 82, and it came out in 83. And look at where we are now, 50 years later. And holy cow, my gosh, it's uh, it's really it's really amazing. Yeah, they started CompuTrack and then uh, a lot of, uh, well, the MACD that they put in there, kind of the, uh, mm -hmm. the stock MACD numbers were 12.26.9. And you mm -hmm. often see uh, people using that even to this day. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, Walt well, Bresser is a uh, brilliant man. Uh, um, yep. I, he, personally, he was a great friend, and I'm sure he's a great friend yep. with you as well. Well, and that's why I live in Tucson, cookie. because he lived there. Uh, I used to come to visit him, and I liked it so much, I moved here. <laughs> and then he moved to Mexico. <laughs> well, you know, interesting, you said you know, a, a lot of people uh, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, the entire southwestern United States, um, from Los Angeles to Tucson, in my experience, had a overwhelming plethora of really smart market technicians. I don't know why that was, but uh, I found that, that that southwestern part of the USA had the preponderance of uh, some of the best talent this business has ever seen. 
Yeah, that's that's certainly been that's my experience too. From those, from those. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I used to carry their bags. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. Hey, listen, we're going to have you on again in the second segment of uh, the next hour. Okay, so we'll we'll ch- chat some more about some of these things, and I wanted to ask you a couple okay. other questions all, about. Thanks yeah, so I know we will. Hey, thanks for joining us, Dan, and we'll be back with you in about 50 minutes. Or, oh, let's see, wait, it'll be 40 minutes, so we'll see you then, okay? Or to it. Okay, Stan Harley, folks, he'll be back at the next segment of the show. We'll pay a few bills now, we'll be right back, 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average from the high that we made uh, back in January. Oh, actually, it was December the uh, the 18th, right before Christmas. You'll see that big spike that we had there. And then if you'll notice that the 61% retracement of that whole move came in at uh, 33,846. Well, the high last night was 83,880. So it went 30 pips above it. Of course, it's backed off uh, 350 points from that level. So that would definitely, after hitting it two days in a row, yesterday we missed it by 10 points. Last night we went above it by a little bit during that 
other pattern that I had posted for you earlier showing you what was happening on the 15 minute or eight, I think that was an eight minute chart showing you how the patterns were lining up because that's what you do is you get down to the point where you're watching for something good to happen you go down to to a smaller time frame looking at it microscopically to get your risk down because when these patterns fail and they do fail you got to get used to that they only write about you know two-thirds of the time but you know many golfers win 66 percent of the games but anyway let's keep an eye on this one because if we ever close above that number and i mean look like we were going to do it last night for sure and yet, by golly, uh, something happened and, you know, the market moved down and now it's starting to, to say, well, maybe this is very important. On the second part of the show uh, that I'll be doing uh, shortly here in the next uh, 10 minutes, I want to be looking at the bank stocks, folks, because uh, it's not over there. I mean, we've had this huge rally in the stock market. I mean, we've gone, you know, bonkers. I mean, well, just just to give you an example, if you remember I pointed this out to us that we had not seen anything like this. This was just back on the, the 28th. If you remember, we had that monster update. And when we had something like that happen, you want to see what the outlier is. And as you can see here, when you S&P is on the left, oops, let's get it right here. And I'll be back in just a little bit, 877-927-6648. 